Hola, bienvenidos, buenas tardes. Hi, good afternoon, welcome. Mi nombre es Eliana y estoy aquí con mi compañera Alexia. Estamos aquí para interpretar entre inglés y español. Uh, my name is Eliana y I'm here with my compañera Alexia and we are here to interpret between English and Spanish. La justicia del lenguaje, que es el compromiso que tenemos en la colectiva donde trabaja, trabajamos, incluye el compromiso de la presencia plena de todos y la capacidad de comunicarnos en nuestros idiomas. So, uh, language justice, which is the concept that we work with in the collective that we're part of, uh, includes um, the ability to participate in a space as our whole beings. Y de comunicarnos también en nuestros idiomas. Quisiéramos comenzar reconociendo todos los idiomas presentes hoy aquí y también los idiomas de los pueblos indígenas de esta tierra. Yo me encuentro en Los Ángeles, en tierra no cedida Tongba. And also it includes uh, the ability to communicate in our languages. We also would like to honor all the languages present here um, and uh, the languages present in our lands. I am in Los Angeles, which is unceded Tongva land. Um, este evento hoy, perdón, se llevará a cabo en inglés y español. Ambos idiomas se van a usar activamente, así que usted no se siente cómodo comunicándose en ambos idiomas. Podrá elegir el canal de idiomas en un momento después de que hayamos explicado cómo funciona. So the event today is going to be held in both languages, English and Spanish. They're going to be actively used. So if you don't feel 100% comfortable in both languages, you're going to be using the a tool that we're going to explain how to use in just a second. Como podrán ver en su pantalla, para escuchar la interpretación, solamente se, si se está conectando con computadora, eh, pres, verá un icono de un mundo en la parte inferior de la pantalla. Si se está conectando con tableta o teléfono, tiene que pulsar en más y verá un menú que incluye la opción de interpretación de idiomas. As you can see on your screen how to select uh, the channels. If you are joining via a computer, you will see uh, icon in the shape of a globe. And it's at the bottom of your screen. And if you're joining us via a tablet or a smartphone, you will see a button that says a more or a mask with three little dots. And then you choose the drop down menu where it says language interpretation. Entonces, para escuchar la interpretación, pulse el icono del mundo o más y luego interpretación de idiomas y elija su canal de idioma. So to access interpretation, just go to the globe or a more than language interpretation and then choose your preferred language channel. Entonces vamos a empezar a usar la fun función en este momento. So we're going to start using the function right at this moment. Entonces, ojalá todo el mundo esté eligiendo su canal de idiomas en este momento. So Mira, I hope that everyone is able to choose their language channel right now and people who would rather participate in one language, eh, they're in their preferred language channel. So whoever is bilingual in Spanish and English, you can just leave the function off or choose a channel however you wish and then Whoever is using the channel, you can click mute original audio just to hear the voice of the person who's interpreting or the interpreter. If you are not able to hear the interpreter, please don't suffer in silence. Use the chat box or get in contact with TK or Zuzi to ask for help or tech assistance. Uh, final detail, which is not a little detail, is a very important thing for us. Uh, whoever is listening in Spanish, you might have noticed that we are using the ending E instead of the traditional A or O. For example, when we said bienvenidos at the beginning, this is not a mistake in pronunciation, but a very intentional effort of creating uh, inclusive spaces and avoiding uh, making assumptions related to gender. We are so grateful to TK and the whole team who is facilitating this event and making a sure that uh, we are able to be here as language nerds. We are so happy to be here supporting this multilingual space because we feel tremendous solidarity with the work you all do. And we are big fans of DIY and uh, radical publishing. So it is a delight to be here and support the multilingual space. Thank you so much. Great, thank you so much. 
Thank you, Eliana and Alexia, for that. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is TK Sangwan, and I'm a librarian at UCLA, as well as the organizer of the Radical Publishing in Mexico City series. On behalf of the Bibliographical Society of America and UCLA Library, I want to welcome you to the second installment of the Radical Publishing in Mexico City series. Um, it's wonderful to see so many familiar names in the chat and to learn some new names as well. Um, I hope you're as excited as I am for today's program. Um, but before we get started, I want to remind everyone that this event is being recorded and will be made available afterwards. Um, we also ask that everyone treat folks with respect, and I invite you to review the code of conduct as well, which I'll put in the chat afterwards. Um, if this is your first time attending a Bibliographical Society of America or BSA event, welcome. BSA is an international interdisciplinary scholarly organization that fosters the study of books and other textual artifacts in traditional and emerging formats. And if you're interested about learning about upcoming programs, including the rest of the programs in this series, I'll share the link to the events also in the chat afterwards. Uh, you can also support this work by becoming a BSA member, and I'll also note that there are special rates for colleagues in Latin America. Um, if this is our second event, but if this is your first time coming, I want to give you a little bit of background on the aim of the Radical Printing in Mexico City series. This series will highlight creative bibliographic research and practice originating in Mexico City and aims to highlight transnationalism in the bibliographic studies and tie bibliographic history to the current socio-political context. Uh, as a current Rare Book School Fellow, I organize a speaker series with the aim to decenter Global North productions in Rare Book, Artist Book, and Bibliographic Discourse, and highlight some of the important politically and aesthetically relevant work happening in the Global South. And of course, none of this work to make the series happen occurs in a vacuum. So I want to give a huge thanks to the Bibliographical Society of America, who is our sponsor of this event, um, and to the anonymous donor who made it possible. Um, I also want to thank my home institution of UCLA for co-sponsoring the series, and especially my colleague Susie Lee, who's helped organize all the technical logistics uh, to make the interpretation and the recording possible. Um, I would also like to thank again Eliana and Alexia from Antonio Los Angeles, who will be interpreting this event so it can be made more broadly available to a wider audience. And of course, huge thanks to all of you for attending today. So again, if you're having any issues with interpretation, uh, just drop a message in the chat and we will do our best to help you. If you would like to tweet about the event, please use the hashtag RadPubCDMX, and I will drop that and everyone's social media handles in the chat if you want to tag everyone. And again, if you have questions, please uh, put them in the Q&A box. Um, we will be choosing some at the end to go through. We'll be spending about 30 minutes with Tonet Yu from Estudos on Libro, uh, who will be giving his talk, and then we'll be closing it up with a discussion among us all, moderated by uh, my colleague Jenna Sorio. Um, and lastly, at the end of the program, please fill out a quick two question evaluation saying what you appreciated about the event, and what could have gone better for you. This is our only our second time hosting a webinar with uh, simultaneous interpretation. So any feedback you have will be really helpful for uh, making the rest of the series go smoothly. And again, I'll drop the links in the chat after I'm done. And so now, without further ado, I will introduce today's moderator, and who will then introduce our invited guests. So Jennifer Osorio is the head of International and Area Studies at the UCLA Library and the Librarian for Spanish and Portuguese, Latin American and Ethnic Studies. She holds an MLIS in Information Studies and an MA in Latin American Studies, both from UCLA. She is also currently a visiting program officer with the leadership project of the Association of Research Libraries. And her research interests include leadership in libraries, open access in Latin America, and primary source instruction. So please join me in welcoming Jennifer. And I will pass the palabra to you, Jen. And please take yourself off mute. <laughs> has to happen. Thank you. Um, so before I introduce our speaker, I also want to thank TK for putting this together and bringing us all together today and in the other events that she's holding for the Radical Publishing in Mexico City uh, series. So thank you for that and to the Bibliographical Society of America. So our speaker today is E. Tonatu Trejo, who is the founder, designer, and editor of Esto 
of Esto es un libro, an experimental publishing lab in Mexico City. He is currently the head of the editorial department for the media consortium Mundo Editorial and previously led the editorial department at the academic press Plaza y Valdez. In addition to publishing articles and visual poetry with various Mexican publications and offering editorial classes within, within institutions of higher education, he co-founded the K Bookstore and was awarded the best artisanal book at the 2016 book fair hosted by the Fondo de Cultura Económica in Mexico. Trejo earned his bachelor's degree in graphic communication with a specialization in visual studies from the National Autonomous University of Mexico, UNAM, and 17 Critical Studies Institute, respectively. Ed Donato Trejo is the fundador, diseñador, and editor de Esto es un libro, un laboratorio experimental basado en la Ciudad de México. Actualmente es jefe del departamento. And de now Jennifer is saying the same thing in Spanish. tipográficas y poesía visual en diversas revistas y periódicos de México y ha sido invitado a impartir clases extraordinarias de procesos editoriales en varias instituciones de educación superior en México. Es socio fundador de la librería K y en, en el 2016 fue ganador del premio El Mejor Libro Artesanal en la Feria del Libro Independiente 2016, Fundo de Cultura Económica México. Trejo es licenciado en Comunicación Gráfica, Escuela Nacional de Artes Plásticas, UNAM, con especialidad en Estudios Visuales, 17 Instituto de Estudios Críticos. Y con, es, con eso, por favor, dale una cálida bienvenida a nuestro presentador. So, let's give Donatiu a warm welcome. Thank you. Hola a todos. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I am very happy to be here. I am very grateful uh, for the invitation, for the community institutions and invitations. I am also very grateful uh, for the curiosity um, of uh, everyone being very curious of peeking into the neighbor's window and seeing what's happening in terms of editorial and also uh, trying to uh, jump to Latin America from uh, the point that I'm going to try to uh, make today. So I'm going to share my screen. And I would like to start with a three epigraphs that I thought were important for this occasion. Can you see it? Uh, no, not yet. There? Donatiu, could you increase your volume, please? Is that better? Yes. Can you all see my screen? I'm sharing it. Yes, we can see it. Okay. So uh, the first one. Don't let them tell you it is a time for hope. Now is a time for anger and rage. Hope invites us to wait, anger to organize. There is a time for hope and a time for anger. This is the time for anger. After anger comes hope. Thus, am Cecil in discourse or colonial on colonialism. Uh, number two. It seems that we are not necessarily short of radical thinking. What we are missing is more radical practices. This uh, epigraph it is signed by um, a collective called and publishing from England. Number three. The pressures on Zapatismo are also given in terms of the use of language, what should be said, which expression is macho or sexist, which is feminist, and we feel like they are beginning to corner us. We do not stand up in weapons or for the, we want the use of the word and we were wrote for pleasure and we do not want to lose it. We do not want to become people who produce a commodity or something for the market, even if that market is left wing or progressive or democratic. 
Subcomandante Marcos, who was interviewed by Juan Gelman. Now, I would like to start uh, everyone to step into the press uh, laboratory in which I develop the press, the practice. Uh, it's been eight years, I think, here in uh, Mexico City, which is a project that I've shared with people without whom we we wouldn't be able to reach the limits that uh, we have. So I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce everyone here. So here we have Joana Segura. To the right we have On Guerrero. Uh, below, to the left, we have Isabel Vázquez, and to the right, Agnael Gesca. So I would like to invite everyone to explore the website that we have here. So the project started eight years ago as something strictly uh, in the press realm. So we wanted to create a catalog can you speak a little bit louder? It's a little bit hard to hear you. So I'm going to keep going. So it's been eight years. We've been producing eight years within Laboratorio Editorial. And uh, within these eight years, we have built a catalog completely inconsistent because we really want is to always uh, keep reinventing our the, the, the process that is going to lead us uh, and uh, to a, a goal or like a result that it is just uh, producing content. So we have gone from the most conventional formats like this one. This was our first book. Then video editions like this collection that we have. And then we have also touched upon the the becoming of the object and of text to share in a, 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 the space of mobility of the of the reader. And one of our most daring exercises was trying to have an architectural space through the uh, editorial, the press process that was called body space reading. I would like to, Cuerpo Espacio Lectura. It was an exercise in which we called upon the readers to get involved with Tona. So do the slides need to be moving because they're not. Okay, hold on a sec. Estuve pasando, eh, estuve pasando imágenes I de was la showing images from our web page. No, we can only see about, four, we can only see the four images. I think it's not in the right mode. I think it's not in presentation mode. Maybe if you hit play, let me see. No, let me see. One, one moment. Thanks, everyone, for your patience. No consigo hacer que se vea mi pan, la pantalla que estoy I can't viendo. get this to show the screen that I can see now. Are you sharing your screen? Yeah. Cuando, cuando compartes, to, when you share your screen, what it shows is the selection that shows your entire computer, not just the slides. OK, well, I'm just going to continue with the presentation in PowerPoint. That's what you're seeing, right? Is that what you're seeing right now? No, we can't see anything. Or you can't see that either. Uh, do you want me to open up your PowerPoint? 
Ahora sí. Can you see it now? Yes, now we can. But maybe you need to put it, maybe you need to hit play so that those slides will move forward. Yeah. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm using a different internet and I'm not able to find a way to do that. Can you make it full screen? Okay, so what I wanted to talk about a little bit was through these images, which you'll be able to see if you go to our web website, um, the, the entire spectrum of publications that we've uh, done in the lab, in the lab, in Laboratorio, it always is a, a, a form of production that's thinking about the form of the book in a different way, thinking about reading possibilities, uh, divergent, always different reading possibilities that we um, are wanting to bring forward when we create our publications. Um, particularly interested in sharing with you um, that the, the book production is just the first stage of what we're doing at the Laboratorio. Uh, we understand that what we're producing on a theoretical level in the explorations that we have been um, putting forward up to now is information that we want to share, right? So we um, work from the assumption that as a, a press project, uh, we also want to have a space um, in, inside our installations, we want a space for sharing and a space for learning, but also at this point is in, inside our homes. So we wanted to make the private public. So we opened spaces, uh, small apartments, like a small apartment where I live, we wanted to open this space. Uh, this is a permanent uh, conversatorium, a place to converse, where we um, invite anyone who's, who's interested in uh, small press work or in the, the kinds of different ideas that, that um, bubble up from that work to come and to share through open calls that we share with, with our community. All these new ideas and whatever kinds of, of desire and impulse we have to expand beyond borders and uh, to constantly think, rethink what is reading, what is language, what is what is a library, what is a bookstore. And the, the last space that we opened is a space that I'm particularly proud of is uh, uh, the, an, an eight year project of, of a library Uh, across Latin America and also on a global level um, it is a digital library where we have many, many publications we're acquiring, we're always acquiring more. Uh, there's a great variety uh, with all, each publication has its own um, foundations, its own ideas. And what we're trying to get toward is a reading experience that's uh, going to be extremely diverse. There are great ideas in this public library. This is also a public library project. And the circulation that we've been able to have varies from people who are uh, studying books and everything that has to do with books very deeply, very assiduously, and to students who are just barely beginning to think of themselves as um, designers, authors, um, uh, press uh, publishers. So you can see in the space that we have all of the practices that are relating to publishing um, and printing and in its many, many dimensions are present here. There are um, press project objects or published objects to facilitate different kinds of reading experiences and to be able to reach readers who, who want to approach reading from a, a, a really different perspective. So now that we've, we've um, I've traced a little bit in this initial moment uh, where we're coming from in the um, laboratory editorial, the, our, our press laboratory and, and our approach to the book, what I really wanna share with you um, isn't precisely what we're doing here, but the things that are are being done and being produced at the level of all of Latin America. So I'm going to uh, see if I can make this. Okay, now what I have is, I have my image on the screen. Can you see it well? 
Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Great. So the the main body of this talk um, is comes from many different interrelation um, participation experiences, um, other mentalities, other perspective, other people who are involved in this work and who are sharing across the region of Latin America with us through three somewhat defined periods. The first is since we opened uh, the um, li our library. So these are works from all over Latin America that are coming to Mexico through many, many different institutions or through specialized book fairs or art fairs. Some of these projects, which are um, circulating around the continent, are passing through here through the uh, Biblioteca de Anomalías, or our Library of Anomalies. So these are very intimate reading experiences or intimate relationships that we develop with our colleagues, with our, our co-creators. So you can see here. Uh, Sarita La Torre from Soma Publicaciones in Peru. And uh, when she was here, uh, we co-published a book with her uh, and we had the great good fortune of being able to present, pre present that book here in our conservatory, our book conservatory. So this is a, a Colombian colleague as well, Manuela Moreno, uh, who was able to come here to our library uh, our library of anomalies. And these are an, a number of different informal images that you can see. But you can also see there's like a really a deeply powerful engagement and meeting around experimental publishing worlds um, in Chile as well. And so there are a couple of representative projects here. Um, Dudo Ediciones. Uh, which is in the hands of Maria Paz Morales and the Fabrica de, de Experimentación Editorial or the um, Experimental Publishing Factory, uh, which is run by Paula Bravo. Um, and so with a number uh, of these different publishing projects, we, we held some encounters. It's pretty intense. And it, we were able to, to have an exchange. We were able to, to pay them a return visit in Santiago. Now, this is someone who uh, we can't, uh, we must mention in, in our um, in, in, in our catalog of visits um, when TK came and to do some bibliographic uh, research here at our federal institu institute and as well in the Mex in Mexico City, and she's showing us her um, her card from the, the the National Mexican Library of the time where she was spending her time when she was here, and this is just really uh, opened up a world of friendship for us. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is one of our most important um, and just most wonderful experiences was a, a trip that we did across Latin America and in, from, in September and, and October of 2019, which give, gave us the opportunity to share um, it through a workshop that was called Licuar el, el Libro, to blend books. Um, so we went to Uruguay, Paraguay, Chile, Ar Argentina. We had uh, a fairly well-nourished and, and robust agenda um, in, in each city um, looking at small press worlds and small press projects. So this was us uh, in Medellin, in Colombia. Um, this was called, uh, we, we had a conversation uh, called Cruz de Miradas with a number of different um, companions in, in bookmaking. Uh, it was really wonderful. And the foundation of their thinking comes from architecture. Uh, Licuar el Libro, uh, this was our first session, the session that we did um, in Casa Tragaluz, also in Medellin, in Colombia. This was a, a gathering of bookmakers, of artists, illustrators, designers. Uh, to share with us at, through this session. This, what I'm showing you here, is a, uh, a, a, a sit-down chat that we had uh, in Rosario, in Argentina, um, as part of uh, uh, 
the Association of Independent Experimental Publishing. So people were able to share their creative thinking um, against a backdrop of uh, the local scene in which that production exists. Missed a bit when he was frozen. So this is a project called Arquitectura y Fantasia, Architecture and Fantasy in the city of La Plata in Argentina. Uh, this artist has a plotter through which she's able to basically make any book out of anything she imagines. Uh, it was really interesting when it came time to imagine the mechanisms of paper itself in relationship to her creations. This was our second session uh, of Licuar el Libro. This was in Montevideo in Uruguay. Uh, here we had the great um, good fortune of being able to sit down and share uh, with a press, a small press called Asafran, which means saffron, that, uh, and they, they gifted us a book that requires that you destroy it in order to be able to access the content. As one of the exercises that they wanted to to land on um, in their exploration for a bookmaking in Ur Uruguay. Um, El libro no existe, the book does not exist, was a series of conversations in Santiago de Chile. And, um, these are some uh, companions from the uh, Union of Experimental Projects. Um, we shared curiosities and uh, thinking around what's behind the production of the, of the books that we make and uh, the press project, uh, products and projects that we're able to create. So we met to uh, have a conversation. It was just a, a few hours uh, before the social explosion that occurred in Santiago. Um, and we were still able to have a number of hours of conversation before that um, social uprising began and to share some of the secrets of our practices before uh, our, our main objective really um, in all of these um, talks was to participate together in um, in fairs and festivals together here. There was a printing fair in Chile. Um, and just uh, during the second day, uh, we were interrupted by uh, the city, which was exploding into a thousand pieces with social uprising. So the that uprising and that that riotous uprising would would end with changes to the Chilean constitution. So finally, our final the final period that I wanted to mention um, is that we created a, um, a publication with a number of different projects. This was a um, cross Latin American series of three book fairs. Um, you can see at the top uh, micro utopias or micro utopias um, in Paraguay, where there is a book fair that happens um, and as well in Argentina and Tijuana um, and also in Brazil. So this is a series of book fairs. And what's interesting about them is that the majority of book fairs that take place around uh, uh, sort of beyond the conventional, they usually uh, often they'll in incorporate an online version as well where we're able to achieve wider circulation for the books. But in Paraguay and in Tijuana, they decided to move away from that model and to program a series of meetups through which people would be able to talk about some of the most elemental um, issues around book distribution and book production. So uh, sustainability of our projects, um, uh, questions of circulation and distribution, uh, organization, and what we were, were able to do was to uh, come together as a group of publishing projects across Chile, Argentina, Ecuador, Uruguay, Spain, and Colombia. This was a, a book that we created um, that would uh, it, that was our participation re representing our Mexican press project. Um, and I, there it, it worked as as uh, an artist book, 
And what we put out also was a call for projects. And what you're going to see now is, so when you do online meetups and online gatherings, you can sort of um, have some kind of testimonial or some document record of who was present. So you can see here, uh, this is a much more artistic vision around who was there. Uh, so this is a screen draw rather than a screen capture. I'm not exactly sure what to call it of the participants in the La Razón de Ser La Idea, the reason for being of our ideas. And so you can see here on the left, there's me, there's some other organizers in the center. Uh, there's Maggie from Paraguay, there's Ana from Tijuana. Why am I sharing this? I like to show this, especially in territory that does not belong to Latin America, because in this region, there is a precisely, there is the uh, this uh, seeking, generating this uh, network where we not only center the public, the, the press, but also the ideas. And I think that is the start. I'm going to start talking uh, more about the politics of experimental uh, the press. So the central part is uh, thinking that there is a will of um, getting closer to Latin America. And I think that more specifically in this space, they already had uh, this idea of their own uh, socio-political realities, and they were uh, bringing them to very similar practices. And I love, I love to see that uh, Mexico is peeking uh, into this uh, Latin American dialogue through a very interesting projects, mostly. Um, I leave with this huge satisfaction of uh, being part of these of these meetups. Okay, so this is a different thing that I'm going to start uh, talking about. Okay, so the the following in this little the presentation is something that I started to put together through some notes that I wanted to feed uh, through uh, more live commentary. And it is an attempt of building a portrait, uh, a, a pretty legitimate portrait of the political thought that exists behind uh, this kind of uh, pr production. And everything that was talked about uh, in this three years of these uh, meetups in between colleagues. So it was asked uh, for me to uh, build these notes to facilitate the whole situation for the interpreters. So starting that, uh, the translators, I'm sorry, and starting that uh, exercise, I realized that it was something uh, much more uh, it is not a text, but it, it, it smells a little bit of a, of a manifesto, right? This um, more of a, this is a book and I would, I would like to read it. I, I would like to share it because I think is a very strong and clear and political a description of how we are understanding a role in the a political development as a press at a continental level. So the title is, which is more, I took the, I took the liberty. I, I, I called it the disposable experimentalist manifesto in five points. I'm gonna read it a little bit slow because the compañeras who are interpreting asked me to do it. so I can support them in their work. So Disposable Experimentalist Manifesto. Point number one. The political scope 
of the press today no longer only pass through the writers and their speeches. They are not about the political positioning of publishers or press in the face of a shared reality or the possibility of ideological reproduction, much less about the scope of a thousand publications distributed in the shadow of secrecy or the penetration of a thought through the object called the book. The countries that make up the Latin American region have a long history of dissident publishing and huge and much needed representatives of this type of editorial or press production. However, today we think of the region as a set of extended uh, localities or places that recognize each other in the conspirational resistance. We think about that based on the specific context of each uh, press, far from a global homogenization, sustained and uniform codes and practices. We left the analogy of the publisher as a guerrilla towards the analogy of the publisher as a re rhizome, rhizome. Point number two. Now, the militancy of press or authors acquires an equal importance to that of our situated practices at specific times and places. Uh, there continue and will continue to be politicized bookmakers conscious and consistent with a movement of, uh, to some school of political thought. But today we also seek to extend our range of advocacy based on our labor policies, collaboration policies, reproduction policies, idea uh, po policies of ideas, exchange of exchange of ideas, circulation and property policies, design policies, policies of the material, the politics of the relationship between the body and the edited object. Point number three, we envision it impossible that today those political practices emerge solely from the socioeconomic reality of the region. This is no longer the only fuel that now fuels our press and drive. Today, we try to reverse the flow of influence by creating specific editorial press imagery, the imaginary that tried to model social wings, whose transcendent managers in turn to modify political situations on site in situ. And it is not about con content editing anymore. It is uh, about the possibility of editing time, space, and interpersonal and interspatial relationships between bodies, affectivities, and intellectuals as opposed to the contamination of her objects publications. It is also about the repercussions that these relationships produce in the environment. And in this sense, any action or omission has political repercussions in their context. There is no political nihilism. nihilism. Point number four. In this panorama, language loses preponderance and on the contrary, the value of the gesture increases. The possibility of activating the reader between the lines is exacerbated without explicitly summoning the particular or collective political agency, but provoking their political action at the point, uh, the blind point from the institutional political board. Um, it is, they're not a trying to give to the politics that feed a development. We understand we are trying to liberate this exercise, recognizing them as a mundane activity, simple, natural, and not uh, intellectualized. The experience of reading, it is a tangible in any way, not only in the spaces in which historical discourse has uh, made available for it. That is why our press uh, project can be held in any way, in any place. It is not about language. It is no longer about language. We do not seek to convince through the firmness of the word because the word fixes the ideas and the gesture leaves them open to interpretation. In any case, neither the author nor the editor ever know whether the reader or viewer read the book the way they wanted them to read. So we bet on the infiltration of the languages and theories from other disciplines to look for choreo readings or a text score or the phenomenology of the book as an exhibition space as a sculptural uh, piece. Let's turn our faces to uh, the eminence of the word uh, of uh, the eye of the object. 
of the fetish of the possession of the things to open a way of the free experience of the body in time and space because everything at the end is obsolete we profoundly love the uh, ambiguity of rather than fleeing from the commercial industrial strike what flees from the processes that wishes to fossilize it from the habits installed in each of the actors in the books production chain which we now also consider like an effective chain we lowered the book from its pedestal and we took it to live next to the map next to the instructive next to the pamphlet the graffiti the triptych the manifesto the vindication of an attack point number six Uh, the politics of our projects today implies, in addition to all of the above, self-management and administration that many times uh, of a precariousness that forces us to do the most we can with the little we have. A precariousness of a precarity that can be understood as a format, as a structure that involuntarily promotes new displacements, future uh, divergences from our work. In general, we do not live by our exercise. We live for our exercise. And behind it, there is a reflection of a pleasure without guilt. Point number seven, we seek to collectivize our findings, link our techniques and processes so that they can, uh, they can overflow, expanding their radius of action through accompaniments more or less personal and yet alive, real, at least latent. We have the will to dismantle our practices for the benefit of a strengthening of the differences in search of a thousand different forms of addition of all possible uh, worlds. We share uh, worrying and uh, critiques and uh, the Criticisms of the discussion of issues involved uh, with publications and publishing in deinstitutionalized spaces. We question our ways uh, and those of others in places of our privacy because we understand that our editorial projects also have a body. We share tools, machines, time, drink, and food because we are not only concepts. We do not speak through a coherently constructed editorial catalog. We speak through every corner of our practice because our practice is our weapon and no practice is more or better than any other in any case. We do not accumulate publications. We jump to the discovery of more types of editorial uh, press practices because editing is a process as hard, as linear, as hierarchical as the industrial press process is an example that everything in reality is prone to editing. And that is a capital, uh, uh, a policy number eight we do not understand um a radicalism as a cutting edge of our practices but rather as a mobile and permeable frontier that adjusts every time we advance in the decomposition of our models all of us in this thinking have a different differentiated radicality at the threshold, thresholds that in due course, we will have to negotiate with other ways of understanding publishing practice and the world in general. We resist, we resist to stop resisting. Nine, and uh, finally, and perhaps in a more in indolent way, we no longer even think in terms of books and publications. The game is no longer, and perhaps uh, was never about press, uh, editorials, uh, content or readings. Alongside this classic model of publishing now, there is a broken shell from which labor laboratories, collectives, uh, press workshops uh, have been born and, and uh, interventions and actions generated by the plasticity of each concept and each practice involved in the projection development production circulation and conservation in publications in all these points there is a possibility of a uh, political expression and well this is where the manifest wraps up and i would like to close this part of the conversation 
Well, I would, I, I, I don't like to close this part of the conversation, but I want to leave it open <coughs> with one last quote from a book that has nothing to do with books. But the a fragment that I used, the a book is called El Instrumento Musical, the Musical Instrument. The author is Bernard uh, Seve, and I'm gonna open. So Stravinsky argued not without uh, a humor or a provocative spirit that the guitar did not exist before Shong, but imagined it in an absolutely original way in his piece, Serenade, Serenade, Serenade. <laughs> what Stravinsky wanted to say is that Schomburg's novel, his use of that instrument involved inventing a new guitar from the body of the guitar that existed a long time ago. Because um, after all, and I close quote, I am inclined to think that the book had not existed until now and that it is only beginning to exist in Latin America and around the world through these practices. In in any case, I think the book is about to exist uh, again. Okay, so this was maybe a, a more dense and theoretical part of what I wanted to say. I wanted to share with you maybe a little bit about our, our production practices um, and some of the links on the chain of our affective book production process. And I'm going to focus on a few projects, starting with Banca Tatui. Let's see. Donna, our time is wrapping up for the questions. So, so how much more time do I have? So the truth is you already are 10 minutes over. So well, we just have about 10 more minutes for a Q&A session if we stop now. Yeah, we do have some questions. Okay, yeah, let's stop now, let's stop now, yes. Great, yeah, sorry to interrupt. Thank you so much, Donna. And I think that we could continue talking for a really long time about all of the, about these ideas and all of the, the projects of Este es un libro, of this is a book, but so I, uh, our folks are gonna have to start to leave. So let's start with some practical questions. How, how's your project going? How's the library? What kinds of books are cataloged there? And are the books and objects cataloged? Okay, so the first point is uh, in this pandemic is through our internet page, right? Our, our website and, and social media. Uh, through any of those platforms, you can get in touch with us directly um, and ask us to visit um, the spaces within our library. And also we'll have, be happy to have a conversation with you. And you'll also find publications um, that are that have to do with digital production or that have to do with a more a three-dimensional production processes maybe or books that are built through um uh, curiosities that are more linked to sculpture maybe publications that uh, propose ruptures um, in the ways that we approach reading or the ways that we approach uh, the physical embodied um, postures that we need to take or positions that we need to take when we have a relationship to editorial production and editorial projects. So I think uh, we're, we're creating almost a, 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 a storage space or a, a, an archive of all of the different practices that are within publishing practice and within a press um, um, that we can't do when we can't do these things physically. Thank you. And could you stop sharing your uh, screen? So this is a, a that qu question was from um, Nina Schneider, and this is a question from Magali Rasa. Rabasa, I was thinking about the idea of precarity as a format. Can you talk a little bit more about how the political ideas um, of the press are materialized? Um, 
of uh, DIY making, autonomy, anti-capitalism, et cetera, in the books themselves as objects and in your events. Yeah, I think that precarity can be defined um, both in terms of an economic situation um, for thinking about maybe technical questions and also theoretical questions. And so um, in this, um, so we have kind of a, almost a, a, a belt that, that uh, presses up against or that that we've had to, had to tighten around our editorial practices that actually has made certain things possible. It's made some of our editorial events possible and some of our editorial objects possible to exist outside of a more an initial sort of more rigid structure um, that, that we thought might might sustain our practices. So in this sense, I wanted to think about it the concept of radicality within our works. It's a radicality that also at times um, is moderated by or is, is mediated by precarity, but also is able to make its its concerns, its theories, its ex forms of experimentation a little bit more, more supple. And we're, we're able to, to get, um, reach a kind of elasticity, a kind of flexibility, plasticity to produce in a way that's, that's different from the last time we produced reproduced a project. Thank you. So we just have a couple of minutes, just three minutes left, and we have two questions that are here in the Q&A space. Uh, they're um, related to the um, library and your organization. So one is, how do you fund, how do you finance the activities of the organization of your library? And also, how do you how do you maintain, how do you care for the um, exchange initiatives with the community since your library is public? How, how do you do that? Yeah, so this is a public library. Well, it's a private library that was made public. So we need to make that distinction. This is a um, an archive that was, was built within our laboratory, but it's um, it, to, to have it be sort of a sealed archive, uh, it seemed to be just like uh, very stagnant and very um, not very rich, not very enriching. So what we wanted to do was open our intimate private workspace. We opened our home, which seems to me to be a political act and a politically important act in terms of national security ideas and uh, human relations um, to invite just anyone to your home. And Right. So since we have been a private archive, we've been, um, of course, constituted by, by purchases that we're able to make um, through sales of our own publications, but also t lots of exchange. I think there's also in these politicized relationships uh, between um, companion projects or, or our partner projects, there is a kind of horizontality to share work, to share time, to exchange ourselves, exchange what we're able to produce, exchange our, our capacities, our skills, our contacts. So basically what we try to do, of, of course, we try to make that be um, the base for our experiences and our production. Thank you so much, Donna. And thank you so much to everyone who was able to be here today. Our time is up, although I'm sure there are more questions, but uh, if you'd like to participate more in the events of this series, TK put the link in the chat. And also uh, there's an evaluation, uh, which hopefully you'll be able to fill um, if you have to leave. And thank you so much to all of those of you who are here today, to Donatiu, to the interpreters, everyone who participated in this such an interesting conversation. Thank you so much. And I apology for, for the technical issues that we had. No, nope, that's what life is now. That's what today's life is. Everything was fine. Thank you so much to everyone and have a great day. Goodbye. Greetings and, and thank you so much. Goodbye. Have a good day.